So hi everybody and welcome to Scouting Ireland's Youth Summit for an evening campfire of storytelling, community and global citizenship. So my name is Jill Fitcher-Farrell and I'm the Chief Scout of Scouting Ireland. I've been involved in scouting since I was 10 years old and now at 23 I'm still involved as both a rover scout and a scouter with Fifth Port Dolly Mount in Dublin. So just a few housekeeping things before we begin. If everyone could be kind and respectful throughout this is uh, throughout the session and participate as fully as possible. We'll have a Mentimeter going in a couple of minutes, so it'd be great to see some answers coming in on that. And also you can ask any questions you have through the Q&A um, box throughout the session. Um, so just to introduce some of our panelists that we have along with us this evening. So we have, um, we have first of all, we have Lydia, who is involved in 31st Waterford Fate Leg Scout Group. She's been involved for the past 10 years. She's also served as a provincial and national youth rep for the Venture section, and she's currently in those roles. She's going to voice the opinions of and experiences of some of our youth members. And today she's presenting particularly on her experience in lockdown and is going to speak about the scout method and how it can be used um, to help with climate action. The next speaker we'll have is another one of our National Venture Youth Reps, it's Calum, and he's involved with 12th Clare Galway as a Venture Scout, and he's going to be speaking about somewhat about the international experience of scouting and being on a World Scout Jamboree. Our third, or well, it's not our third because I'm one of the speakers, it's our fourth and final speaker, Neve Donnelly, who's a scouter from First Mayo Castle Bar, and she works for an NGO called the Scoop Foundation. Um, as a Rover Scout, she also took part in a volunteering project called Time to Be Welcome, which worked with young people from migrant, Roma and refugee backgrounds in Greece. She's going to tell us a bit about her experience in humanitarian work and international scouting. Um, so we're going to get started now with our Mentimeter. Um, if Leo can just pop that up. So if you haven't used Mentimeter before, you're going to go to www.menti.com and use the code 10773883 to get started. So if you just pop that code in, you should be able to use the Menti. And Anya's just popped a chat or a link in the chat as well to get started. So hopefully everyone will be able to join that and we'll have a few quest interactive questions throughout the beginning. Um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of give a background on scouting, both in Ireland and around the world to get us started. So everyone kind of knows exactly what the scout movement is, in case there's any non-scouts on the call tonight, I'll give you a bit of a better context. Yeah, so just yeah, head on, on over to www.menti.com and use the code that's on screen. So it's 10773883. Can you tell when people have joined Leo or do we? No, probably not. We'll just... oh. Okay. Yeah, so we have our first question here on the Mentimeter, which is how many scouts are in Ireland? So what do we think? So Scouting Ireland, it's one of the largest national youth organizations in Ireland, and it's dedicated to developing life skills for young people. And we do this through the Scout Method. Um, it's been going since 1908, and it's across the 32 counties in Ireland, so both Northern Ireland and the Republic. And we have um, ages from six to 26. So have a look at the Menti and see if you can guess how many Scouts there is currently across the island of Ireland. Okay, so we've lots of guesses coming in. Yeah, so, okay, so you might be surprised at this one since a lot of people seem to have guessed 21,000 and less. It's in fact, there's 43,000 um, scouts in Ireland. So we've 35,000 young people involved. So that's ages six to 26. And then we've 12,000 volunteers. So in total, that's currently 43,000. And that's those numbers are actually down slightly because of COVID. Um, so we may end, we could end up with kind of 50,000 post COVID. So it's much bigger than I think a lot of people think. 
Um, and we welcome all members. We don't tolerate any form of discrimination on the grounds of gender, sexuality, race, religion, belief, social class, health, age, or disability. Scouting is open to all, um, which is really important. And it's really like important part of all of our principles. Um, so if, yeah, as I said already, it's our it's a national scout organization. Um, and that's Scouting Ireland. But the main place where people take part in scouting is actually in our local scout group. So that's where the majority of our young people participate in their scouting activities. So this starts, this is often in the form of weekly meetings where they learn various skills like first aid, knots, teamwork, leadership, and then weekend activities, which could be a hike, it could be kayaking, it could be some form of a fundraiser or a beach cleanup. And then they we regularly go on camping trips and other different trips uh, away from home. So most of this is done in the local scout group, although we have national and kind of county based activities as well. So I wonder, if, can we guess how many local scout groups there are in Ireland? So that's our next question on the mentee. So how many do you think? Do we think we have 434, 222 or 310 scout groups in Ireland? remembering that it's across 32 counties and Scouting Ireland is divided up into six provinces to help with some of the management and then we have our own scout counties which makes it a bit confusing because they're not the same as um or like Dublin, Mead, Wicklow they're not the same as the normal counties okay so we've lots of people here guessing 310 and um, seven people guessing that three people guessing 222 and two people guessing 434 well once again you might be surprised to find out it's actually the biggest number so scouting ireland has 434 local groups so it's really quite a big organization um so yeah it's it's kind of a yeah i was kind of surprised when i heard the number the for the first time i was like wow didn't really realize like how big the movement is and i think a lot of young people particularly who are involved kind of in the local scout groups don't realize that they're actually part of something so much bigger um yeah so there's five we have five different sections in scouting we have our youngest section which starts at age six they're known as the beavers and they're from age six to eight the next section then is our cub section. So they're aged from nine to 11. Then we have our scout section, which is kind of the main section and the first age group that scouting began with. And that's ages from 12 to 15. Then we have our venture section, which is what Lydia and Callum, who are two of our speakers for tonight are involved in. So ventures are aged between 15 and 17. Then we have our rover section who are aged 18 to 26. Once you turn 18, as well as being a rover, you can also volunteer as a scouter. Um, and one of the big things about scouting is that when you join, you make a promise. Um, and that's to do, one of the principles of the promise is to do your best, and then also to live by the scout law. And this is kind of then, you know, they're kind of guiding principles. And a lot of people, you know, who are involved in scouting as a young person, but may no longer be involved now, they still feel very, often feel very connected with scouting and they kind of identify as still being a scout. And it's it's something that kind of sticks with you for life. And like a lot of people would turn around and say like, once a scout, always a scout. And I, you know, it's not true for everyone, but it is true for a lot of people. And Ireland actually has quite a large amount of people who are scouts during their lifetime. Um, and I wonder, can we guess how many, what percentage or like what ratio of people in Ireland have been in scouts at some point over the course of their life? So perhaps as a youth member between the age of six to 26, or perhaps um, as a scout leader. So that's the next question. Not sure if we, if that's come up on the mentee yet, but we'll see. Yeah, so do we think it's one in five people? So 20% of people in Ireland have been in scouts, one in 10, 10%. Do we think it's 50% of people have been in scouts? What do we think? What would we guess for this? Oh, so we have a lot of people guessing one in 10, so 10%. Oh, or there's, was there eight people that have guessed one in five? Sorry, I, I'm not sure on the pie. Oh, I think the pie chart's coming up as blue and that's why I can't 
actually see. Okay, so yeah, so 62% of people have actually gotten this right. It is in fact one in five people in Ireland at some point in time have been a scout. So I think that's really interesting. Um, but interestingly as well, I've just moved into a house with someone who actually didn't know what scouts was. And to me, that seems like a complete foreign thing because I've grown up with it so much. Um, and I know so many people involved in it, but actually there's still some people out there who don't know kind of what Scouts is or what's, or have even heard of it. Um, but also I think we've like one of the highest percentage of people in the world who've ever been in Scouts, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about scouting being a world movement because it's not just Ireland that has scouting. So a scouting basically, it, it aims to nurture the personal development of young people and it's a non-formal education movement and as i mentioned earlier we use something called the scout method so this is something that's unique to scouting across the world it's not unique to ireland but it is unique to scouting um and i think it's important to say that kind of in the last two years the scouting movement have really came together to kind of support each other but more than that to support kind of the communities around the world and the, in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's always been kind of inherent to scouting that it's um, about supporting your local community and supporting communities around the world. And I think we'll hear more about that through the stories tonight, particularly um, from Lydia and from, uh, from Lydia and from Neve as well. So I think, scout, yeah, scouts, they're always aiming to kind of make positive changes. And as we transition towards the post pandemic, I think, this collectiveness and the resilience that's built through scouting will really show um, through. So I think um, it's interesting kind of to see, can anyone guess what they think World Scouting's mission is? So not just the mission of Scouting Ireland, but what is the mission of scouting as a world movement? Can anyone guess? So just take a, just throw a stab at it. There's kind of a long sentence, but there's an easy way to sum it up if you, if you know. There's lots of things coming in, okay, helping out and contributing to our community, to work in community and build skills, to make scout groups interact more on a global scale, to educate young people in a fun non, yeah. Okay, so I think like everything, everything that people are putting in is really like, you seem to know what scouts is, you know what it's about, you know a lot of the aims and I think like that to make uh, scout groups interact more on a global scale, like that definitely is one of the principles of kind of what WASM is trying to do. But um, yo, someone's hit it right, hit the nail on the head. So scouting's mission summed up in four words is in fact to create a better world. So although there is everything else everyone said is true and it is an element of it, the overall mission is to create a, a better world. And in longer words, um, WASM, so the World Organization of the Scout Movement to find the mission of scouting to contribute to the education of young people to a value-based on the promise and law to help build a better world where people are self-fulfilled as individuals and play a constructive role in society. So it's basically, we're talking about, we want to develop our young people and our youth members so that they're able to contribute to the better world. It's not necessarily that the, the scouting activities obviously help, but it's more so about the education that we provide so that people can go on and kind of fulfill their dreams and fulfill their potential. Um, so to give a bit of context as to like how big scouting on a world scale is, there's been over 500 million people in scouts since it's been founded in 1907. And it all began with um, a camp led by Sir Robert Baden Powell with 20 boys in 1907 on an island called Brownsky Island in England. So the camp was a big success and Baden Powell had kind of different ideas as to how youth groups could run and different way games and activities they could do. And he wrote a book called Scouting for Boys, which some of you may be familiar with. And this was hugely successful and then it ended up being translated into different languages and then by the time um and then they had a scout kind of the first scout rally had like eleven thousand people eleven thousand scouts at it and then by 1922 so only what's that is it 12 years later there was just over one million scouts around the world and it had become a global movement so i wonder bearing in mind 1922 so 99 years ago there was one million scouts i wonder can we guess how many scouts there are now in the world so that's our next question on the mentimeter so we have three options we have 12 million 23 million and 54 million so I asked, I, another thing I asked my housemates today was how many scouts do they think was in the world? And they guessed 1 million. 
Um, and I, that's not giving any answers away, but it's more, I can tell you it's more than 1 million. Um, so there's, yeah. But it's funny, you kind of don't think of it. I always, I just forget, you know, kind of forget how big it can be. So lots of people getting the answer right here. So yeah, it is in fact 54 million. There's 50 more, 4 million scouts around the globe. So that's how big the scout movement is. It's more than 10 times the population of Ireland, which is enormous when you start to think about it. Um, so I suppose it's like, it's amazing to see like what started as such a small camp um, on an island in England. Now it's like a big movement that's aiming to create a better world and it's developing young people all over the world. And it's in nearly every country across the world. And I wonder, can we guess, there's a very few countries that don't have scouts. And I wonder, can we guess how many that is? Yeah, so do we think it's five countries around the world, 10 countries, or just one country? It's really cool to see that we have some scouts from around the world. And um, Victor and his friend seem to be, are here from Brazil. That's really cool. So you're over learning English in Dublin. That's so exciting. Um, you should definitely try and get involved, hopefully, um, when we can have some kind of more events and things. It'd be great to see if you could get involved with um, some scouting while you're here. I don't know how long you're here for, but that would be really cool. Okay, so we have seven guesses for five, two guesses for 10, and two guesses for one. Have we any more guesses to come in? That's probably it, maybe. Yeah, so, oh, the majority of people, once again, you're getting good at this. The majority of people were right. So it's only five countries around the world which um, don't have any scouts in it, which is pretty significant when you think about it. Um, I don't know if there's like any other movements that are like have that much of an impact. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, that's the end of our Mentimeter um, to start us off for the evening. And that should hopefully, everyone's gotten a bit of an idea of kind of the scale of scouting in Ireland and the scale of scouting around the world. But just before we move on, there's something I've touched on a couple of times that I kind of want to talk about a little bit more and it's the scout method. Um, so I've mentioned some of the elements of it, but it basically, it has eight, uh, hopefully, I don't know if Leo has, can put the, we have a diagram of this on a slide, so hopefully he can pop that up, because it's kind of hard to understand it when you can't see. Um, yeah, so we can see on the diagram here, we have the scout method. So it has eight interconnected principles, which basically we use for everything we're doing. So the first one, which I did mention earlier, is the promise and law which fosters basically our value system and how scouts kind of hopefully go on to like lead their lives and not just in scouting. Then we have personal progression. So personal progression is basically like, it's all about your journey. It's not whether you necessarily complete the task or the adventure. It's basically how much do you learn on it and the dynamics of the team? How well do you grow as an individual and how well do you work within the team? And basically each, we recognize that like each scout's gonna progress at their own speed and will achieve some challenges and perhaps not others, but how well are they working doing it? And then the third principle is learning by doing. So you know we don't try and like explain things to someone or just show them we really try and get everyone involved and they learn as they do things so and I always like I look back on scouting and there's lots of things that I kind of learned subconsciously like you don't realize that you're learning leadership skills but but you are just naturally starting to take the lead doing kind of other tasks then um, the fourth principle is the small group system and I talk about this a lot because I think one of the key skills you learn from scouts is teamwork and I think that's inherent to our small group system so all of our scouts have Actions, or all of our different age groups from beavers right up to rovers all have like a small group system in them and it's often a group of kind of six or eight scouts that they they learn to work kind of individually but particularly they learn to work individually as part of a team and to work as a team to get a lot of their tasks done and it's about the collective work of the team and not the collection of the individuals then our fifth, the fifth part is the symbolic framework. So that's, we use kind of teams, we use names, kind of stories and traditions to spark inspiration around our program. And this kind of helps the learning. And ultimately we want this to kind of be developed by the youth members themselves. 
Then our sixth principle, which I'm sure most people, if they know anything about scouts, have probably guessed this one, and it's nature and the outdoors. So this is basically scouting happens outside whenever possible. This was really helpful during COVID, um, particularly when like after we came out of the first lockdown, we were able to do some scouting activities because we were used to meeting outside. So we were able to just kind of adopt our activities to be a little bit more socially distant. But as much as possible, Scouts is an outdoor organization. And then the seventh principle, and all of these of course are really key, the seventh one is that young people and adults are working together so it's the movement is for young people and it's supported by the adults and then in obviously when you're younger you need more support and as you get older you may not need as much support but you're still being mentored and then you know you suddenly you or not suddenly you develop into kind of being the mentor possibly for some of the younger sections and then the eighth principle is service and commitment so that's kind of to your local community to the world around you and all of that so i suppose hopefully now by the end of this you've a better of a better idea of kind of what scouts is and the background of scouting in ireland and scouting around the world but now we're going to hear kind of some more of the stories of scouts within ireland and some more of the kind of different things that have, people have been up to so first of all we are going to um start off with uh with Lydia, who's going to speak a bit about her experience volunteering in Lockdown Scout Centre. So Lydia, I'll hand over to you. Hello. Um, hey everyone. Um, just first of all, thanks to all the organisers for running the event. Um, my name is Lydia and I'm a 17 year old venture scout from Waterford. Um, I've been involved in scouting since I was six years old. I'd safe to say that it's my favourite part of my life. I've made lifelong friends, learned so many useful skills, and I had an adventure along the way. Um, as Joe was saying, um, I'm going to talk about lockdown. If you're ever fortunate enough to go to lockdown, you'll find yourself surrounded by the beauty of the Wicklow Mountains. Um, over the summer of 2019, uh, with a small group of other ventures, I did my internship there. So that trained me to be one of the volunteers that looks after the centre. Uh, we explored the surrounding areas, we did general maintenance work there, and we helped the campers staying at the centre. Um, immediately I realised that I was a part of something really, really special. Um, I got to have dinner with scouts from Scotland and try haggis for the first time. I got to realise, um, I got to learn German campfire songs um, and dances and realised that we had a lot in common. Um, I also had fun playing frisbee with French scouts. I think lockdown is a perfect example of the scout method that Jill was talking about being put to action. Um, if you're new to the scout method, as Jill was saying, it's everything that we do in promotion scouting. Um, involves young people and adults working together, learning by doing nature and outdoors, um, promise and law, service and commitment, the small group system and symbolic framework. The skills that scouting has taught me are definitely skills for life. Uh, lockdown is definitely a place where learning by doing is put to action. It's a very different type of education to what I know from school. Uh, we learn by doing things and experiencing them and knowing that it's always okay to make mistakes. Uh, during my internship at Lockdown, um, us as the Ventures, a group of 15 to 17 year olds, were completely responsible for, for ourselves. We cooked all our own meals, did our own laundry and cleaned up after ourselves and just learned how to be independent. Um, as someone who used to be quite shy and introverted, I got to build up my confidence uh, by taking bookings from campers, giving directions to people passing by and making friends with loads of new people, uh, who I'm very glad to say I remain friends with now. I got to learn how to use an axe for the first time and cut wood for our pizza oven. Um, and on the more obscure side, I got to help build a harbour that's still there now. Um, at lockdown, young people and adults work together to achieve something beneficial and exciting for everyone. We share the same ideal and commitment and we're united by the same promise and law. The centre is maintained by an enthusiastic group of members and adult volunteers who are passionate about promoting outdoor adventure and the environment. Working with this team and getting to know the other volunteers has impressed me so much. The sense of community that you can feel when you're all working on a project together or cooking dinner is lovely. Everyone has an active role to play and is included. 
Uh, scouting in general is so much more than just a youth organization that you go to once a week. It's a sense of community and provides an overwhelming sense of belonging as well. Uh, scouting to others, uh, service to others is fostered by helping each other out. Uh, we always encourage teamwork as together we can achieve so much more. Um, everyone takes on an increased amount of uh, responsibility for themselves, their actions and their personal development and everyone's there to support each other. Uh, the Scout movement strives to increase um, like our involvement in the community and build uh, develop relationships with them. So lockdown is mindful of like the neighbouring community around it. And as staff, we've done litter picking around the place and cut back the hedges on the roads for the local people. Uh, the concept of commitment is central to scouting. So it involves um, commitment to the scout principles, commitment to fellow scouts and commitment to your own scout group. Um, our motto at lockdown is pitch and get out, meaning spend as much time outdoors and exploring as possible. Uh, nature as an element of the scout method refers to the possibilities the natural world offers to the development of young people. So spending out time, but spending time outdoors facilitates young people getting back to essentials and helps them discover new things. Uh, young people are able to appreciate a simple life and can better understand the need to live in harmony with the environment and the need to protect it. Lockdown and scouting in general also encourage young people to try live lives which have a minimum impact on the environment. Uh, scouting is obliged to be as environmentally friendly as possible and to incorporate this mindset into our youth programme. Young people are given the chance to explore the natural environment while creating a uh, environment of decency, quality and mutual respect for all the other human beings and living creatures. Scouting has always been environmentally friendly as a movement and we teach children as young as six to leave no trace and to explore the outdoors and to appreciate uh, the places that we can go outdoors for free. Um, we provide a strong basis of outdoor education and appreciation for young people. Uh, between the mountains and the lake itself at Lockdown, there is a fantastic variety of habitat types. Some of these are nationally important and they form a part of um, a special area of conservation, but they all contribute in their own way to the vast biodiversity in the area. Uh, the site at Lockdown is managed in a sustainable fashion with proper waste management that encourages reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, we only use um, locally produced firewood from sustainable forests and we encourage minimum impact camping through the leave no trace principles. Um, as I wrap up I'm sure you can all see the appreciation, uh, appreciation that I have for the National Scout Centres and I hope they continue to be a special place for scouts and scout groups all over the country and abroad. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lydia. So that was brilliant. So I think everyone definitely has a good idea of what lockdown is and how special it is um, to so many people. And I think like I have, um, I volunteered in lockdown on a camp once when I was 16. And ever since I still consider it like one of the best weeks of my life. And I learned so many things from it. And it's an absolutely picturesque place. If you ever get the chance to visit, I would 100% recommend going down. So thanks for building that picture and painting it so beautifully for all of us Lydia and also for emphasizing how much um of the scout method is used to utilized in lockdown and the way they operate and how basically young people can like run a scout center and um, which I think is really interesting to for other people who may not be scouts to hear and to understand so next we have Callum so Callum's going to talk a bit about his international experience of scouting and being on what's called a world scout jamboree so I think we have a video to give people a better picture of what a jamboree is first before um, before Callum talks about it. So yeah, there we go. There's the video.
Um, hello everyone, my name is Callum and I'm here to share with you my personal experience of how scouting uh, operates as a global movement through the insanely wonderful thing that is a jamboree. Um, I shall begin by answering the question, what is a jamboree? Um, as I'm sure you got from the video, the closest thing we could kind of equate it to or compare it to was a festival. But to Scout, it is so much more than that. Um, I come from a very small Scout section in Galway. And like many others, year on year, we focus on local events and we meet up with other groups very rarely and very regrettably. Um, however, back in 2019, I was offered the opportunity to go to the 24th World Scout Jamboree. And I'm incredibly glad to say that I took it. Um, the World Jamboree has become known as the largest congregation of Scouts anywhere in the world and only happens once every four years. And for many, like me, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Upon arrival, our troop, who were strangers only months prior, were presented with dozens of amazing activities. And although the activities truly were amazing, all of them faded into the background and melted away in the face of what truly mattered, which was togetherness. Um, over the course of a month, my troop became my family and we camped across two countries meeting thousands of other scouts from all over the world. Uh, scouts from every corner of the world and every walk of life had come together to share the values that we all hold as scouts. With no fear, we spoke to people that we have never met before and sadly, would probably never meet again. Jamborees are the lifeblood of global scouting. They are designed to show scouts from very small groups like me what a glorious organization they are a part of and how we can all live together and one in one global community. Some of the most treasured memories of scouting I have come from this jamboree. Uh, in our first stop, which was the capital of the US, Washington, DC, we visited every museum and every monument. But by far the greatest experience while we were there was meeting other scouts from Australia. Uh, running open arms, we greeted each other like old friends rather than new acquaintances, trading stories and neckerchiefs, looking forward to the memories that we knew we would share for the rest of our lives. Years on, I still look back at the gifts I received that still bear the names of the very people I met so long ago. On camp, bonding with our neighbors through dinners and lightning storms was always the greatest part of our day. And waking up to bears wandering through the campsites became a running joke. Um, even in the least glamorous of our times, we found laughter and joy. On the last night of our camp, tents collapsed and our field was flooded, but we didn't care. Huddled together in the emergency shelter, games, games of cards and storytelling of the amazing journey we had just been on lasted into the morning. None of us got any sleep, but again, we didn't really care because we were all so amazed at the journey we had just come together and the amount of love and respect we had generated for each other. No matter the conditions, scouts will always laugh together, cry together, and yes, we will always stand together. Jamborees are a symbol of not only friendship, but endurance. From a young age, we are taught what scouting is, but at events like, scout, but at events like jamborees, we are taught and we can see what scouting can be. It is a global forum of friendship and a global movement of unbridled force for good. Thank you. Thank you, Callum. So it was lovely to hear you speak so passionately and how and to hear how inspired you kind of are by the Jamboree. Um, and I think like there's just, I mean, Callum's talked about it and we've seen a video, but I don't think there's anything that can really be compared to it. We were discussing this the other day about how it's kind of like a festival, but it's not really. 
And I don't think until you've really been on a jamboree, you really truly understand what it's all about. Um, but it truly is an amazing experience. So next of all, we have Neve Donnelly, and she's going to speak about some of the kind of humanitarian work she's been involved in um, through scouting. So over to you, Neve. Thanks very much, Jill, and thanks and welcome to everyone who's joining us this evening. My name's Neve Donnelly, um, and I've been involved in Scouts since I joined when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I joined my local group in First Mayo, um, and I've been involved ever since, and now I'm 27. I'm still a Scout leader, and I still volunteer as much as I can with the Scouts. Um, what I'm going to talk to you this evening a bit about is my experience working on a project called Time to be Welcome in Greece um, and how that's kind of influenced my professional life and what I think about that experience in terms of how Scouts can be really important in supporting communities, especially in emergency situations or in humanitarian crisis. So Time to be Welcome was a pro program that was sponsored by the or it was funded by the European Commission through Erasmus Plus um, and it was a collaboration between 11 different youth organizations and humanitarian organizations from across Europe and the idea was that we would share our skills um, so for example the British Red Cross they have a lot of experience doing humanitarian response so they would bring those skills to the project um, and the reason that Scouting Ireland got involved is because our volunteers have a lot of experience doing youth work so that's kind of the experience we could bring to the project and um, so Scouting Ireland and the British Red Cross and the Scouts of Greece were kind of the main organizations involved in running this um, project and there was over 50 volunteers involved um, from all across Europe and and they went to Greece and to France to help to, to run youth programs and support young people who are from migrant and refugee backgrounds. Now, just in case any of you are joining who might not um, know what a refugee is, I've just included a little definition of what a refugee is, um, which is a person who has been forced to leave their country in order to escape war, persecution or a natural disaster. So. The term refugee crisis became very popular in Europe in the year 2015, because in that year we had over a, a 1 million refugees arriving in Europe. Um, and that was maybe three or four times the amount that would usually arrive in a year. So that's when the term refugee crisis kind of became popularized in Europe. Um, and I've included a little map here that kind of shows the main routes that people and refugees um, travel in order to get to Europe to try and seek a better life. So as you can see there, there's the Eastern Mediterranean route, um, which is kind of where I was working in Greece. So a lot of the refugees that arrive in Greece are from Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, but an awful lot of young people I worked with were also from Pakistan. Um, now, young people arriving from Pakistan aren't generally considered refugees because they're not coming from a place that's experiencing active war, but they might be coming for other reasons, like perhaps to escape poverty. So they're usually called migrants instead of refugees. But for the pur purpose of this program, we didn't really differentiate between those two things at all. Um, so just to give you an idea of some of the activities that the volunteers did when we got to Greece, I, I was there for about 14 months. Um, and when I arrived, we set up a network of different NGOs that were in Athens, supporting young people who are unaccompanied minors mostly. Now, what an unaccompanied minor means, um, sorry for all the terminology, but an unaccompanied minor is a young person who's under 18, who has arrived in Europe without a parent or guardian, without their family, they've just arrived by themselves. Um, so that can be a very scary experience, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so what we did is we collaborated with these NGOs and we offered them um, different educational programs and youth work programs. Um, I've included a few examples here, but one of the ones that I really enjoyed being involved in was called the mobile school. And I've got a few pictures of it here as well um, on the next slide. But um, the mobile school was basically a um, 
uh, a unit that we could move around to different parts of the city where we knew that there was a lot of young people who were living who were homeless and um, who are from refugee and migrant backgrounds so these young people unfortunately weren't getting the opportunity to go to school so we had this um, kind of wagon that we could pull out into blackboards and we were able to do English classes we were able to do maths and we were just able to even have some nice playtime with the young people and they knew we were going to be there at the same time every week um, so that was very popular. Um, another uh, example of an activity we did is we did a photography workshop. Um, one of our volunteers is a, a wonderful artist and she did a series of um, photography workshops with um, young people who were involved in JAFRA, an organization for Palestinian refugees. Um, and then at the end, they had a big exhibition where they were able to showcase the work that they did. Um, we also did a lot of activities that were kind of focused on promoting healthy lifestyles. So we did a lot of exercise clubs. We did um, running clubs, lots of sports and also cooking classes. Um, and then a highlight for me um, as part of the project was being in charge of running a summer school in cities called Saloniki in Kavala, which are in the north of Greece. Um, the reason we I have some pictures as well of that in the next slide. Um, but the, the reason we decided to run this summer school is because a lot of the young people were um, living, living in refugee camps and they had never been in the school before, but they were going to start school in a local school, Greek school in September. And I'm sure you can all remember it's very nerve wracking starting school in the best of circumstances, let alone when you might not it's not your country and you don't speak the language so we ran the school during the summer to get the young people from the camps to come and get familiar with the school building get get familiar with the classroom and also just to have a lot of fun um, as you can see from this picture one of our volunteers Bruno is having a big water fight with the kids um, so that project really um, gave me a lot of perspective and in, in terms of what Scouts has to offer communities, like I said, in an emergency situation or in a humanitarian crisis like in Greece. Um, it reminds me of what Callum was saying about his experience in the Jamboree and it flooding. We're, we're, not, we're always used to catastrophes in Scouts, so I think that we're used to mobilizing and helping each other. So um, it really stuck with me that that was the case in Greece um, in 2015 when the refugee crisis was really get, reaching its peak. Um, scouting groups in the local communities were actually some of the first responders to give support to refugees. They were really involved in getting food donations and clothes donations and even in setting up some of the refugee camps. Um, so that was something that really impressed me and it made me think about what we can do here in Ireland in terms of supporting communities and what a great resource scout groups are to their local communities. Um, so that experience has really influenced where I've gone in my professional life. So at the moment, I'm working for uh, NGO, a small Dublin based NGO called the Scoop Foundation, and I'm managing a program called Generation Change, which is a mentor program for Irish third level students, and it's a fundraising challenge as well. Um, and I know some of you might actually be in university at the moment, or you might be going to university soon and might be interested in the programme. So I'm just going to play a quick video um, to tell you a little bit more about it. Our world is changing faster than ever before. We've never been so connected, but yet so far apart. So forward thinking, yet so unwise. Ireland's changing too, the way we take care of each other, the way we give each other hope, how we teach and how we learn. But sometimes change doesn't just happen, sometimes we make it happen. When I set up Scoop in 2009, I wanted it to be a platform for me and my friends and family to fight inequality in all its forms around the globe. We built schools in developing countries, we supported doctors in war zones, we reacted to causes close to our own hearts, and in the process we created a pretty unique and different thinking organisation. There's still too many people drowning in the med. Still millions of kids around the world who don't have access to proper education. In Ireland, we have record numbers of homelessness and it's the next generation who are going to inherit the situation. We think it's time to join forces with the young people of Ireland. Generation Change is a new fundraising challenge brought to you by Scoop Foundation. We're looking for students who want to use their energy and skill to do some good and get some brilliant experience for their future careers. So, while you're raising funds, 
we'll get you invaluable career advice, guidance, mentoring, and practical internships with some of Ireland's brightest and sharpest people from across tech, the arts, business, and charity sectors. Change starts here with you, Generation Change. So let's join forces and do some good. To find out more, visit www.generationchange.ie or www.scoopfoundation.org. That's great. So if any of you are interested in learning a little bit more about the Scoop Foundation um, or about Generation Change, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or check out our website. But my email is info at generationchange.ie if any of you want to find out more about it. So I'll pass you back over to Jill now. That's all for me. Hi. Um, thanks, Neve. So that was really great. It was lovely to hear um, all about the different experiences. And I suppose on that kind of the real community impact that Scouts can have all over the world and not just in Ireland. Um, so now I just want to say if anyone has any questions that you can put them into the Q&A box. Um, I don't think we have any in yet, but we will, uh, we can answer them in a minute if anyone does have any questions about for any of the panelists or about scouting in general, um, just feel free to throw them in. And then before we finish up, we also just have to do a quick, another quick Mentimeter um, which is just for evaluation by NYCI. So I think Leo will launch that now. Um, and we'll just get that out of the way. And in the meantime, people can be throwing some questions into the Q&A if you want to. Yeah, so the link for the Menti has just gone into the chat now, if you want to click on it. Hopefully we can, hopefully everyone can get that up. Yeah, the link seems to work, so you should be able to. Answer. Yeah, so this is just an evaluation for NYCI. It's not, um, yeah, it's nothing too serious. It's just so we know kind of who's involved and stuff. Yeah, so we have one question in. Um, so one question from Anita and Neve, you probably you might know about this, but is scouting involved in any projects involved in the direct provision centers? Probably know the best about this. Yeah, so we've definitely had some uh, joint um, activities with young people in direct provision before, um, both at the national level in the organization, but there's also a lot of local groups who might be close to a direct provision center who have kind of done different activities, um, either doing scouting activities or joint camps and things like that. Um, but that's something that I definitely would like to see us growing more because I do think that both direct provision centres here in Ireland and in the kind of shelters I was working in in Greece, one of the saddest things about it is that there can be really boring, they're really boring places to live, especially as a young person. So any kind of like um, outdoor activities you can do, I think, to make life a little bit more interesting, a little bit more tolerable, that's absolutely great. Um, but I don't think Jill might know better than, I don't think we have anything on a national level at the moment running with direct provision. Um, no, we don't have any current national projects running. Um, yeah, but I know, yeah, I, the same as Neve said, there has been stuff in the past and definitely some kind of local involvement, but it's definitely somewhere, something we'd like to see done more. Um, and hopefully we can kind of get up and running um, soon, but we'll be able to do that. We've lack of, yes, yeah, so obviously we have a strong interest in kind of diversity and inclusion and equality. And I think that's, you know, direct provision is one of the like key issues at the moment. And it's really like quite an unfair setting to be in and it's quite difficult. So it'd be great if scouting could provide any services kind of for the young people in particular there so we had another question that came in in the chat box which is if there's many girls in scouts so in ireland um we we don't quite have 50 50 but we have um i think it's over 45 percent of our youth members are um female and then for our adult mem our adult volunteers we actually have more female volunteers uh, female adult volunteers and we have male adult volunteers so we do have a lot of girls however we definitely have some issues of 
representation and we're really trying to work on that at the moment to get more females involved kind of at the national levels and in some of the kind of more leading roles to take on some of the like key leadership roles throughout the organization um yeah so is there any more questions if you want to put them in q a or in the chat box we can try and answer them otherwise i don't know i'm not sure if the mentimeter is finished or what's going on with that <laughs> I don't know if it's done or what um, happened there. But yeah, just to thank everyone again for coming along and hopefully you got something out. Oh, it's still, okay, the Mentimeter is still going on. Um, perfect. So hopefully everyone kind of learned something about the session and got something out of it. Hopefully you have a better idea of kind of what scouting is and some of the things we're involved in. But if anyone has any questions, I know Anya um, already put... Anya put her email into the group or into the chat. You can email that, you can email me, or um, you can also, if you want to email me, my email address is chiefscout at scouts.ie. We also have a website, which is scouting or scouts.ie. So there's lots of info there. If you're looking to get involved in any way, um, yeah, just check it out. And you hopefully will see some scouts around now um, after, or now that the things are hopefully getting a bit better after COVID or hopefully after Christmas, you'll see more kind of scouts out and about. Um, but yeah, I think if once the Mentimeter is finished, we are good to go. Unless there's any more final questions. Oh, oh sorry, there's two more questions. There's two more questions in the Menti. I don't know if I can. There we go. Yeah, so we're, the current question everyone should be able to see at the moment is what are you taking away about scouting as a global activity? Um, I suppose I'll I'll take that question. Oh, sorry. It, this is this is on the menti meter. <laughs> but if you want to talk, if you want to have a chat, Callum, go for it. Um. Well, I mean, like the uh, I suppose the the core value to take away from scouting as a global movement, I think, would be togetherness, because it's something that, um, like scouting is something that it spans so many countries and so many different cultures, but in the face of so much diversity, everyone is, in, everyone is the same in that we are all scouts and we all follow the same like fundamental principles and you know live our lives by them, or at least part of our lives by them. That's kind of a... Yeah, I think that hits the nail on the head there, Callum. Um, so we've two, actually got two questions that have just come in. So it's what are our plans for the new year ahead with scouting? So I suppose the big focus at the moment for us is that we're trying to ensure all of our local scout groups get back up and running. So there's a lot of groups that are doing really well and um, they've managed to get up and running, but we're trying to ensure there's kind of collaboration between that so that we have like supports from one group to another and supports kind of at a county level to ensure that all our groups and all of the sections within the groups um, get back going. And then we're hoping to have some national events next year for various different sections. They'll be mostly kind of over the summer months. Um, and that's, yeah, that's kind of some of the plans, but we've lots of other little projects and things on the side. Um, and then and the second question is, what work have we been doing around the sustainable development goals? So I could answer this, but I don't know if Anya is here. She might be able to better. This is her um, a particular area. So she might want to jump in and explain some of the work we're doing around the SDGs. Yeah, sure. So um, the current plans we have um, is developing more into the community. So last year, our focus was kind of looking internally with sustainable development goals and kind of analyzing what we're doing um, within within our groups. and. Um, at our group count, our group conference um, last week, we also launched a self uh, a self assessment for sustainability in terms of accessibility in the groups for groups to start to consider um, how how inclusive the space is in their scout group and is there some tweaks they can do to help to make that space a bit more inclusive and really it was a an awareness raising um, assessment for them to just 
start to get interested in the topic and to feel somewhat supported in taking in taking that on because some some groups are kind of can be left to kind of deal with that on their own and they're not necessarily experts in in the area so we're trying to help them kind of ease them into being a bit more confident in that so primarily with SDGs we're trying to make our spaces more inclusive and um and a bit stronger in terms of the connections in the community so next in in January we will be reviewing our policies internally and um, looking to get a lot of more people involved in um, the reviewing of that so we can kind of relaunch our policies by February and then um, we for for the climate justice element of the kind of SDGs we have a few fashion things coming up which is very exciting so a lot of this kind of slow fashion movement and um, Aoife the venture team lead for the program department is working with her team and they are developing a lot of programming around this particularly around the cultural side of fast fashion and the fashion in general and kind of more um like cultural cultural skills that have been passed down to generations that really value kind of clothes and craftsmanship and and how to to kind of be take care of what you have and um so we'll be running some kind of mending workshops and um yeah, so we're trying to, I suppose, tackle it from a few areas that we may not have thought of doing at first in skating. And then, of course, just um, with the areas that we already do and do really, really well with Leave No Trace um, and being more mindful about how we do what we do um, is really kind of supposed to be the key part right now of our work on the SDGs. Um, don't know, Jill, if there's other bits that I'm not aware of. Um, <laughs> no, I happening. think that... That's a really good summary, Anya. And I think just to say that, like we had, um, Anya was strongly involved in uh, the, there was like a sustainable skating from home program, which was developed last year and was available for like all of the sections. And we still have all of those resources available and it's re um, online um, with a website called betterworld.ie. And they were really useful, like in terms of kind of raising awareness, but like in a more interactive way. So a lot of them were little tasks that could be used for, say, the younger sections that got them really thinking about each of the sustainable development goals. Um, yeah, and I think it's, yeah, it's that whole thing that we're now trying to just move a little bit past the awareness stage and what can we actually do to start to take action and where, what other groups can we link in with? Um, because sometimes there's no point in us rewriting the wheel. There's experts out there in a lot of these areas. Um, yeah, so I think the Mentimeter is all finished up now as well. So I think we are done for this evening. So just to say a huge big thank you to all of our panelists again, to Lydia, Neve, and to Callum. And a massive thank you to Leo for facilitating the session and also to Anya who really pulled it all together. And then a big thank you to everyone who came along and participated and hopefully everyone enjoyed the session. So thanks a million and good night. <laughs>